and welcome back footy fans to another episode of Donnie's Disposals. I am your host, Coach Donnie Hessier, back with another sample snapshot. I know it has been a little bit since the last time we have talked the sample and a lot has happened. Finals, ladies and gentlemen, the finals have hit San, the sandful the sandful uh competition and i cannot wait for it joining me as always are my great guests back after a one show hiatus mr dar seven stars great to see you sir hey donnie how you going how you going phil pleasure to be back yes the the one the, the sock was insane just to come out the final so thank you for stepping in and uh great great to be back guys Fantastic. And per usual, the fantastic caller on Sandful now and the AFL app nowadays, Mr. Phil Aspinall. Phil, great to see you, sir. Yeah, g'day, gentlemen. G'day, uh, listeners and viewers. It's great to be uh, with you again. And of course, finals, it feels like finals, as my backdrop says. And it's amazing <laughs> that we've got finals footy upon us. And the smell of uh, spring is in the air here in South Australia. And we love nothing but being back at Adelaide Oval and, and, and having some Sandful finals footy. One of the best things about talking with people in the Southern Hemisphere is the fact that the 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 switch of of seasons is fantastic. We're we're getting slowly cooler here and hitting autumn when it comes to it up here, and you guys are getting warmer and hitting spring. So absolutely love it. So gents, the last time that we convened with Phil and I, we went through all the way up to round thirteen. So we need fourteen through eighteen. I know as you're as some of you are watching this, the finals have started. We will cover that in our next show after the grand final, we'll cover all of the finals as a whole. So we will cover everything up to finals around so 14 through 18. And gents, I was watching several of these, several of these games, and holy crackers, did we see an absolutely scintillating run these last five rounds of the season? I mean I mean, two draws in a round. I, this was absolutely yep. mental and some cracking finishes to the season. Donnie, we're just saying before, it was just an insane run up the finals. It seriously was. Anything would have happened with even two rounds to go. Like Norwood come from, I think they lost the first seven, eight games and they were just two games out of the finals with them um, a few games to go. That's how, that's how this competition just really sparked everything. Everyone in Adelaide at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it showed guys that any team on their given day could beat any team and um, you know, the, the Eagles have obviously had their issues up and down, but they've had some some amazing wins. And then West Adelaide as well. And, and the Bloods, whilst they're, they're sitting at the bottom of the table and, and win another wooden spoon, I think a fifth in a row, they were much more competitive. We know that the Bulldogs have managed to get through to the finals and have doubled their victories from year from last year. Coach Paul Thomas extended for another two years. So what a fantastic run to the finals we had. And the sample would have been licking their lips, particularly in that last round where there was all these permutations on show in round 18. It's so good to see Paul Thomas do that. I mean, he's an ex-legend of the club. It's good to see an ex-legend. His father was a legend of the club as well. Yep. So, and um, it's just great to see the father-son there. And then, obviously, he went out to did a Port Adelaide and come back, and that's doing, crack, you know, doing great work with Centrals. It's awesome to see that. Fantastic. Let's jump into it. We'll jump into the hedges a little bit and go through it. We'll jump all again, again, all the way back to July at round 14. With some cracking games in here. We'll start off with as North Adelaide beat Norwood 48-40. The Doggies beat the beat the Panthers 58-30. Thor, as you said, West Adelaide really pushing the the mm -hmm. minor premiers this is the minor premiers of the season glenelg 44 34 as the tigers get the 10 point win the magpies beat sturt 73 54 and adelaide unfortunately with a smashing of woodville west torrance 111 42 and again the the bloods with that 10 point win they would pushed glenelg who has been the class of the uh, of the season probably since about round four yeah, I think we saw the Tigers on the day. Probably didn't play great footy. I remember it was a Channel 7 broadcast game. And, um, you know, West Adelaide showed that fighting spirit that the Bloods have. But good sides know how to win ugly. And the Tigers would have put this down as a bit of an ugly win and just got the chocolates. I think at uh, three-quarter time, West Adelaide were maybe just in front. And in the end, a couple of goals to the Tigers in the final term was enough to get the job done. Oh, look, absolutely. I think... <laughs> We're going to wipe this one in a few weeks' time. We'll talk about it in a few weeks' time where actually uh, Eagles beat Glenelg. So we will talk about that later. But this is how the Glenelg, what happened last – this is exactly the Glenelg have been the, the top echelon all year and they you know, just come into the finals. This happens, you know, just only scrape in by the, the bottom side and, uh, and then Eagles beat them. So this is this is the competition, guys. It's just exciting stuff. 
Yeah, absolutely fantastic. It was great to see these great results. We will move to round 15 as we see Sturt meet Woodville West Torrance by 15, 75, 60. The Adelaide, the, uh, the, the showdown sandful version ended up being quite the stinker as Adelaide smashed Port Adelaide 92, 27. The Tigers bounced back after kind of a not so great performance with a nice 30 point win over the Rooster 75, 45. Norwood continues to play stronger footy after a, a dismal start, just edging the Central District's Bulldog 64 59. And South Adelaide beat the Bloods 59 37. I got to say it, sir. Was there any worry that Norwood may way make the finals there, Phil, after they, they, they edged the doggies by five? Yeah, look, that win wasn't an aberration, as Darcy touched on before. They'd lost their first eight, but they had a wretched run with injury. They'd lost some players late in the uh, preseason before season 2023 kicked off, and they showed that they were competitive. Uh, I didn't call this game, but I watched it on replay, and they were in the in the fight for the whole contest, and in the end, managed to get away with a pretty tight win, and the Dogs would have been disappointed. Obviously, it didn't impact them too much coming into finals, but what it did do, um, and, and I think Coach Jade Rawlings came out and publicly said, knew that they were probably not going to make the finals, but what you want to do is you want to shape the finals. And um, he certainly uh, had, had a good couple of wins in the back half of the year to do that. No, oh, yeah, that's it, exactly. So, as it nor would uh, beat the doggies. And as I said, you were saying before that, um, Phil, that uh, look, the doggies, they, they know they're in the finals now. So you get Norwood coming out. Yes, they were a bit depleted, but come out to beat a side such as that. And obviously I think that that started their run. You know, the Red Legs, yeah. you know, they... they <laughs> And um, if, they, if they look, they could have been in a you know gone from premiership side the year before to you know, wooden spooners, but uh, lucky they you know the players did come back and knock it off sides such as the Bulldogs. But yeah, yeah. then you look at the the LA Crows Port game. I mean, they're, they're both in the finals, but to, for Crows to come out and beat them by that much was just a, just insane as well. Definitely, it was, it's 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 hard to see that sometimes. So you, the, to see those scores like that, because you're you're like, how is how is a team that off on, on one day? But again, you just, right, you just yeah. never know. It's footy sometimes. Sometimes it just it happens to happen. So we move to round sixteen as an absolute scintillating start to the round with Norwood edging out the Panthers eighty three fifty one, Sturt edging out the Central Districts Bulldogs by four sixty two fifty eight. Glenelg surviving a tough battle from the Maggie 66-57. The Roosters getting a win over Woodville West Torrance by 15-80-65. And Adelaide continuing their high-scoring streak as a 38-point win over the Bloods 96-58. And I got to say this, I remember watching the highlights. Phil, you got to call this Glenelg-Port-Adelaide game. And boy, did you and Narelle call the absolute pants off this game. It was a fantastic game. Absolutely loved your call. The excitement in your voice with each of the absolutely magnificent goals that were kicked in this game. So I, if you could just tell me how how great this game was because Port Adelaide pushed the Tigers all the way to the end. Yeah, it was a fascinating game. And I got the call up in that afternoon. So I wasn't even due to call that. I headed off to Murray Bridge and, and commentated on the uh, on the Sunday, I think it was between West Adelaide and Adelaide. So some last minute preparation. And um, yeah, it was a, a fascinating game, a real quality high scoring game of footy. And the Tigers just managed to, you know, hold on and, and get the points. But look, it was the first time in history that Port Adelaide had played under lights officially. Um, they had a new new upgrade to their lighting there for obviously AFLW and for training. Um, and the Tigers, you know, no better matchups, the arch rivals there. And yeah, some quality goals kicked on the night. I remember Jed Hagen kicked a couple, Orazio Fantasia. Uh, we saw him on the weekend in the set first week of finals as a, as a dominant player. Um, but it was a fun game to call, and Narelle's uh, on to bigger and better things now. She's commentating the AFLW with Foxtel. Yeah, so she's she got a good grounding with yeah. us. Um, but it was a great, great night to call a historical event at Albert and Oval. Yeah. That's it. And uh, look, I was at the Eagles game on the Sunday, and the yeah, North, which is just too classy the whole day, actually. They, they had a little day, and Eagles tried to come back in that third quarter, but North just kept us at bay and uh, ended up, you know, in a very good, strong contest. Again, you don't see, there's nothing there but Westies and, and the Crows either. So, all righty. Well, I will say it was good of the Sample to, sorry, uh, Donnie, good to no, the, yeah, yeah. the Sample to take games out to the country regions as well. And for those that don't know, Murray Bridge, an hour and a half outside of Adelaide. Mm -hmm. Very famous uh, town on the on the famous Murray River, and um, it's West Adelaide's recruiting zone. And Adelaide have got a nice connection there as well. And um, that was a different uh, different event. We commentated out of a, a little broadcast box, a little caravan that the local guys used, and it was 
interesting calling from ground level, a unique experience. Normally we have the elevation of a grandstand, mm -hmm. um, but uh, the guys from River Murray TV were wonderful in accommodating us and, and Adelaide getting the job done in, in a pretty comfortable fashion. Yeah, fantastic. And it's good. It's good. Like I said, country, country, Australia, there, there's so much richness when, when it comes to the footy. So it's always great that these competitions get out there and do that. I think that's fantastic for the for the comp. Absolutely. So we move to what I have to say was the most interesting round as I, oh, as I went through watching the highlights insane. because two draws start off with the draw between the Maggies and the Panthers, 97, 97 all. The Central District's Bulldogs edged the Roosters by two in a game that it all was down to behinds as a 60-58 win by the Doggies. Another uh, a massive upset is your Eagles, Dars, knock off the Tigers 104-82. The second draw sees West Adelaide and Norwood draw 76 all, and Adelaide continue their strong form with a nice win over Sturt 103-87. I, two draws in one round. I'm I I I I had to say I was stunned by this. But then to add the fact that the upset by Woodville West Torrens over yeah. or over a very good Tigers team, and the doggies surviving in a two point thriller against North Adelaide. This was hard to argue. Not one of the best rounds of Sandfold this entire season. Just with the Eagles, round. Round. Just with, uh, Jess Lonigan, who was my <laughs> player sponsor, Jess Lonigan. Announced his retirement from the Eagles, and uh, he was a great guy. Played about eighty games at Gold Coast Suns, and Sam Lonigan coached the Eagles for one year, and he dragged uh, Jess Lonigan down. And he announced his retirement on that weekend, and I think look whether they did it for him, but uh, he's um, a great player, great guy, and uh, he's just had another baby, so he's decided to call time. But uh, I think the boys did it for him, and what a win it was, knocking off the top side. It was an amazing result. It was one that you would never have yeah. picked. It would be the last tip that you would have gone with, all due respect to the Eagles. But it Absolutely. just shows the evenness of the season. And it shows that if you're not switched on, if you're not on your game on any given day, mm -hmm. Coach Darren Reeves was really disappointed with their structure on the day. And um, that kind of taught them a bit of a lesson to not be complacent. But, Donny, the two draws that you touched on, first time, I think, since the mid-50s, 1950, I think it was, since we last had two draws in a round. And I was calling the Dogs in the North game, and that was almost a third draw, which has never happened in Sandville history. So that was a fascinating penultimate round to lead into the finals. And um, the, the, the anticlimactic game, to some extent, was obviously the Crows getting over the Double Blues reasonably easily. But, um, yeah, the Panthers had their chances. Fascinating with the, the game with uh, West Adelaide and Norwood, there was a, miss, um, a point not allocated on the scoreboard in the final term. So yeah. when Luke Redfern from West Adelaide kicked his point after the siren, he actually thought they'd won um, because the, the, whilst the score hadn't registered, but it was ended up being the point was a go-ahead to draw. So there wow. were celebrations, a mass of, of, of the, the blood thinking that uh, clinched the win. But when the scoreboard finally uh, got up to date, it showed that it was uh, you know locked away 76 apiece. Wow, that, that's yeah, that's exactly. got to be gut wrenching to have that <laughs> yeah, particularly yeah. happen. You think, think at least you get a win, you get a win out of it. Unfortunately, all you the yeah. only thing you guaranteed your team was. A draw, unfortunately, but again, it just it just shows you on the right day things can happen. You just you just never know. And Woodville was Torrance getting a win over there. It just shows any time, and the competition is much more even. Yes, yes, you see the the clear delineation between between the the, the finals teams and the, and not. But wow, just fantastic two draws in one round. It's got to be absolutely mental. So we jump to it, the final round of the season. And unfortunately it didn't have the sizzle that some people <laughs> might think it was as Glenelg with a smashing over South Adelaide, 100 to 40 Sturt with a smash with a 27 point win over North Adelaide, 173 central districts Bulldogs with a nice impressive win over the Magpies, 91 to 76 West Adelaide survive a tough battle with Woodville once Torrance 86 80 and Norwood end their season a little anticlimactic, but a nice win over Adelaide 93 74. Yeah, look, there's, I think the Eagles were actually you know, so shattered that day because it was um, Jay Sheedy, our coach. He announced his retirement. So it was his last game as coach of the Eagles. And they thought they may have, I mean, obviously playing the bottom side after knocking off the Norwood the week before, the top side coming out, they. May have just done done it for, for Jay, but they didn't. It was actually a kick after Siren as well. So that's what hurts more, that, that it was a, a draw uh, up until a second ago. They kicked the goal and uh, Bloods got up by a goal. But uh, not, not, not a good way to finish the season. Yeah, it was a fascinating game out of Elizabeth. I was commentating the Central Court game and I talked about permutations earlier. And 
at one stage in the final term because at Prospect, only the uh, nearest oval heading up Main North Road, um, North Adelaide and Sturt were fighting it out as well. And um, the results needed to go the way for Centrals to get into the five. And I reckon throughout the course of the game, whenever Port Adelaide hit the lead, the percentage dropped Centrals back outside the five and then North would get the lead back over Sturt. They would go back in the five. And at one stage in the last game of the year, um, there were six or seven permutations of changes of the latter position. So Centrals were playing finals, then weren't, then were. North were in, then were out. And in the end, Sturt ran away with a pretty comfortable win. And the Doggies just made sure that they jumped into fourth instead of finishing in fifth against Port Adelaide. And then would obviously face off against the Magpies the week after in the finals again. Definitely, for sure. Again, as we, as we kind of said, we, we are recording this a little a little after the, the finals have started so some people are listening going are you going to start talking about the finals I, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go through the finals i did ask both of these gentlemen to do their tips before this but when we had originally scheduled last week before the finals had gone so i'm going to trust that you gentlemen didn't make any changes to your tips a little bit later but <laughs> i want to pre i want to preview the finals ladies and gentlemen because this looks like to be an absolutely cracking final because if any of these results show anything is possible, I know you could look at it and go, Glenelg should be the favorite as, as we go into it. But just, just looking at it, I mean, as we said, Central's v. Port will, will be the elimination final, and then Sturt and Adelaide will be the qualifying final to kind of move on again. The the five is a very interesting version of the finals. I I'm always I, I I just I gotta ask gentlemen your thoughts on the five because it, for me it is very interesting because it does really benefit the top team more than anything because I mean it's one game and then you're into the grand final if if you win it so it, it really does give a lot of hey here's here's your little nugget of success if you if finish top of the table. Yeah, I think that proved to be successful for Central Districts through the two thousands when they had their decade of dominance. You speak to legendary coach Roy Laird, who um, he would always say that extra week off winning the second semi-final and getting through was always beneficial because it would, you know, it's a heavy, long season. The players train hard through the the wet winter months and um, it gave his guys that little bit of a week off to refresh her. And um, yes, you might lose a bit of playing momentum, but you know, the dogs were synonymous for training at game level intensity. So you ask any coach and I reckon a week off and then another win and through to a grand final, you know, you're going to have your team cherry ripe and, um, I'm always a fan of the top five. I think it's been uh, fantastic since we've obviously had the 10 team competition and I think it's the best way to go. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Exactly right. Because uh, uh, I were thinking about having four because obviously the Port Crows, they come in because it used to be eight, but I think the five is, it just gives the extra week as well. So just the yep. excitement and keeps that competition alive for another week. Definitely for sure. So like I said, a couple of these games have already happened, but we are going to go through it. So, just quickly, your thoughts on this because uh, again, I'm I'm fascinated by by the teams that are in this. I know that some of the results have already happened, but I, I'm fascinated to see how this goes because you've got a, a Sturt team that I think on its day can be very very good. Adelaide and Port, it really will kind of depend on how the the AFL clubs do they want to let some of those players down to play in it because if so, there's a there's a lot of talent on Port and Adelaide's list to the point where if they want to, they can go for it. So, and Port is in the finals. So they're the only ones that may have the issue of will players be held back to, to, to stay up for the, the big club. So if I'm Adelaide, do you go for it? Over to you, Phil, because I actually, um, Adelaide, because I, like I saw in both Adelaide and Crows, uh, sorry, Port Adelaide and Crows, who the AFL listed players could play in that game. And I thought, gee whiz, that's a pretty solid team, you know, the, the amount of players they got. Even pushed uh, young Jake Wiedemann out, you know, young Weeds lad. He's he um didn't end, end up playing and he's a pretty class player for Port Adelaide as well. So I thought, gee, with that that solid class, I think the Port with the Crows, they're gonna they're gonna knock those sides off. Yeah, and it was always interesting to see what would happen in terms of qualification. And while Port Adelaide was still alive yeah. at AFL level, um someone like a Charlie Dixon or even a Travis Boak, if he got dropped, he could go back and play Sample footy. The only eligibility situation was if you played in the last AFL game, you weren't able to play in yep. the Sample finals the following week. And um, talking to Jared Mears, one of the uh, footy managers at the Sample side of things with the Adelaide Crows, um, he, he was saying they'd want to play their best side. And obviously their AFL team were out and those that were mm. qualified and fit and firing would play. There was some conjecture about Matty Crouch. I think he uh, came off his exit interview and was a little bit sore from you know playing some good AFL footy 
I suspect he might come back in this week, which would be a massive boost for yeah. uh, the Crows. You mentioned Young Weed. He unfortunately had a bit of a uh, setback with a back injury, couldn't get into the mm. side. So um, in the end, Adelaide only fielded uh, 13, 14 AFL list of players on the weekend and Port 13. So it wasn't as bad as perhaps people would have thought. But uh, yeah, it certainly was uh, set up with a fantastic final series uh, upon us after those uh, good, good last few rounds. All righty, so let's have some, let's have some fun. Let's see who you guys think are going to win the Premiership. So, again, here we go. First el- elimination final, Centrals v Port. I- I'm gonna be a little. I'm gonna be a little bit sneaky here. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna start with you, Phil. When you did your tips before this weekend, who did you have moving on Centrals or Port Adelaide? It was an interesting one because it was all going to come down to a selection perspective. I didn't think Central were going to make too many changes. They had a couple of injury uh, players under some injury clouds. And Scott Lysett, whether he was going to play or not, was going to be a telling factor. He played. And in the end, I actually thought Port Adelaide would get over the line just based on those extra AFL-listed players being able to have that run in the fast in the final term. And if it goes down to the wire, nine times out of ten, those AFL players get over the line. So, um, yeah, I actually, whilst the head said Central, uh, sorry, the heart said Central, the head said Port Adelaide. And uh, that was the way I was going to go. Ready? Darce, your thoughts? Yeah, I agree with Phil. I, I saw you know, who, who's qualified to play, and I was with Port Adelaide, and 100%, you know, you've got full-time, you know, full-time players you know, versus you know, p- part-time semi-pro, and just that fitness at the end of the game when they're really going to push themselves. I thought Port were going to get over the line. All right, we jump to the qualifying final. Who gets the luxury of playing Glenelg in that Second round in that next round game to potentially make the grand final. See Sturt v Adelaide. Darius, who did you have moving on in this one? No, I'm going to go for the Crows. I think they're just that again. The the AFL side's out. The you know the senior side. And I think just the players that are playing in AFL are just going to knock. Like Lil has been the best best uh, team all year. I just think uh, the Crows have got that bit of edge now. That the, the players that are playing in that team uh, can can t- take it out. All right, Phil. Yeah, and the form lines of the two sides, respectively, was a bit up and down. And Adelaide, they're obviously, obviously until the AFL season had finished, were at the beck and call of what players were available and some late changes and injuries in and out. And they only played each other in round 17, where with just 11 players, the lowest they've ever had at AFL, w, at, sorry, AFL level in the Sample competition, they only had 11 players and, and got over the line. So um, Sturt have been very, very Jekyll and Hyde. And I actually was going to think Adelaide were going to get over the line in the end in a tight one. Um, because Sturt have been a bit patchy in the back half of the year. Definitely, for sure. So doing doing how the bracket is set up from there for both of you, we see an ad, we see a showdown in the finals as we see Porta as we see no, actually no, it's Port v Sturt in that next in that next round game, but and we see Adelaide v Glenelg. So Port v Sturt, who do you have moving on and who goes home? So we'll start well, with Central that. Central v Sturt, because obviously Central Central, uh, yeah. Yeah, oh, Central yeah. Oops, my bad. Yeah, end up getting through. So look, um it's it's gonna be a fascinating one. Obviously, yeah, Central are gonna be cock a hoop with some good form in the back half of the year and qualifying <laughs> Sturt up and down. So um yeah, I'm gonna go. I went with the head last time, I'm gonna go with the heart this time, and I reckon the doggies might get the chocolates on the weekend. All right. I'm with you, Phil. I'm 100% with you as well. You can, I, the Sturt have been up and down. Bulldogs, have, their run home has been absolutely brilliant. I think they've got, look, the supporters are brilliant. They, I think they'll get right behind these boys. And I would be a soft spot for Bulldogs because obviously the Eagles and the Bulldogs during the the, you know, the 2000s against those grand finals was, was pretty intense. And I've got a bit of a soft spot for Bulldogs as well. Yeah, I, I I remember watching. I watched the highlights of this again. Central. We'll we'll discuss this all in the next one. But the the Central Districts versus Port Adelaide game. The, the donkeys roar when they started getting going there oh, late late yeah. in that game. And there there yeah. the donkeys fans got up and about in that in that game and it looked fantastic. So uh, it'll be really interesting. I can't wait for that one. I I I would go with you guys too. I think Centrals has got a lot of mojo. Sturt's going off a little bit of a downer fall into Port Adelaide, falling to Adelaide. So it'll be fantastic already. And, and then, Tony, just quickly, they'll have some soldiers down as well because they're going to have some injuries and suspensions out of the weekend of the first week of finals. So they're going to be a bit battered and bruised, and that's going to play into Central's favour. Mm-hmm, for sure. Now and then, and then the other one, who gets the opportunity? Glenelg v Adelaide. Who's going to stamp their name into the grand final later on in the year? Who do you, who do you like here, Darcy? No, I'm going to. I think Crows are going to win this one. I don't want to see Tigers do what they did in 2020 when they played when 
they had uh, two Saturdays off. They won the first one, won the uh, – missed – How's it work? So they only played one game in three weeks or something to mm. play off the grand final. Eagles knocked them off because I think they had the, too many too many breaks. So I think Crows to win, but then I think it's going to be a Crows Tigers grand final. Sorry, Phil, I know you're the central, but I think Tigers will <laughs> win the week after. Tigers will win the week after. Whoever wins Sturt Centrals and then play off in the grand final. Unfortunately, Adelaide, I just think they're too fit and fast to they, they will be in the grand final. Just hope that Canel can knock, knock them off then. That's my tip, but I'm, I'm sure we're going to come to that in a minute. All right. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting with Glenelg. They've got a few players that are in, in their best 22 who are coming off some long-term injuries. So will they roll the dice? Will they always take advantage of the week off? Will they make some big changes? Um, you know, they were pretty successful in the back half of the year bar a couple of little hiccups. So um, Adelaide will be up and about. Again, I know it's a, it's a you know, fade on fade complete with you talk with AFL uh, selection. If if the likes of Matty Crouch come in and and then Curvis obviously is under a cloud with injury, yeah. um, Adelaide at full strength will probably beat Glenelg in my opinion. So um, mm-hmm. I, I think whilst I know Darren Reese personally and I'd love for him to get through for the Tigers, I just think Adelaide might get over the line as well. Yeah, if, especially if they continue to play the footy that they have been playing, I, I would not doubt that. So that would then send Glenelg down into the next game, which then they would play Central Districts for that opportunity to play Adelaide in the grand final Darcy is kind of, like I said, kind of already jumped the shark a little bit and said that he believes that Glenelg will knock off the central districts bulldogs here. Phil will test your head and your heart. Can centrals <laughs> get by the tigers and get that matchup with Adelaide in the grand final or are the tigers just too strong. I think the tigers are too strong. They've been a bit of a bogey side for the dogs in recent seasons. Mm-hmm. They uh, have a, a big three potent forward line, which, which centrals might struggle to match up on. And the Tigers have got one of the best midfields in the competition. And, um, you know, Brett Turner is one of those guys I was leading, alluding to earlier with injury. Um, if he comes back in, he always dominates in that midfield area. So, yeah, I would think if it got through to a Glenelg Central prelim, um, I would be uh, thinking that, unfortunately, for the Doggies fans, that the Tigers would get through. All righty. And then let's go to it. Grand final. You both have it. Glenelg, Adelaide, rematch two weeks later. Can the Tigers get it done or does Adelaide get a little bit of a, a, a sweetener after kind of a, a, a up and down season for the, the AFL and AF and uh, sample clubs? No, I'm going for Glenelg. I reckon they, they got to have better momentum going into this one rather than did the 2021. So better momentum. I think they're going to play a bit tougher and harder and I think they can knock off in the grand final, uh, the Crows. If that, if that's the story. So yes. Yeah, if that transpires, I, I tend to think the Glenelg might just get the chocolates yeah. as well. We, of course, haven't had an AFL reserve side yet win a premiership. Mm. Port Adelaide have got close on two occasions, 2014, first year of them being the Magpies as the AFL reserves, uh, lost to Nord and, and, and of course, uh, famously weren't able to get the job done in 2017 in that one-point uh, thriller, thrilling win to Sturt. So it would always come down to selection from my perspective as well. You know, players might get injured in the coming uh, weeks of finals, but... Yeah, look, if he had to flip a coin right now, I reckon it's landing on the Tigers. Well, they'll go the long way, so they'll get an extra game or two, but it might not be a bad thing. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for this episode. But I, but I have to say this well, is that yep. pre 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 the end pre the show this week, I have to say it was fantastic being able to sit here and chat with these two gentlemen on the future of the women's game in South Australia, because as, as, as I was kind of mentioning, and many people know I am a huge Sydney Swans fan and they got their first AFLW. I know this is Stanful. Stay with me here. But the future in the Sandful W and the talent that I see, I think if I'm a Port Adelaide or I'm an Adelaide fan, get down and watch these Sandful women because you have some absolute guns coming up including as, as I was kind of discussing with, with these two gentlemen, the, the Port Adelaide team, if if their zone is correct, they have got some absolute superstars coming in. So just, I, I want to kind of go off the AFLW momentum here. Sample, sample W. I mean, how awesome is it for these SA teams to have such great talent coming up from the sample W because this weekend was fantastic footy. You had the ad, you had the, the the showdown this weekend. It was absolutely magnificent. And to think you've got some really, really good youngsters coming in that potentially could be donning either a Crows or a Port Adelaide jumper. Yeah, and I think as we've touched on a couple of times when we've been discussing Sample W, my observations over the seven or eight years the competition's been in 
is we're getting progressively better skills from the girls then having a foot in their hands from you know eight nine ten years old right through the pathways the sample do a wonderful job the afl partner beautifully with them and provide those pathways and we see talented young girls coming through and, and, and they're going to they're going to be the stars of the competition and you know we'll see hopefully next year centrals be able to back up their uh, their inaugural sample w premiership definitely oh, yeah. Dars. yeah no, exactly. We've got as a young lady that's uh, part of the West Torrens group, and she she said exactly what you guys were saying that now that the um, the pathways is it's been 10, 10 years going now. So all these girls mm -hmm. are turning 16, 17, 18. So now that they're into the draft now, so we could see some fantastic things happening in, in the next few years. And then a huge shout out. I'll, I'll do this, and hopefully she gets a chance to see this. But huge shout out to Coach Narelle Smith of the Woodville West Torrance Eagles. Got to hear her call AFLW this round, including the Port Adelaide Showdown game. Magnificent to hear her yeah. on. It was fantastic to hear her knowledge. I, I specifically reached out to her online and, and thanked her because her insights were absolutely great for somebody that's developing as a coach and her insights in the game were fantastic so a huge shout out as the sample connection to see her stepping up and getting to do special comments for the aflw it is magnificent to see that and, and for a legend of, of of women's footy in south australia it is absolutely fantastic and for you darce the fact that that's the head coach of your women's team that is developing and getting stronger each year it's great for norelle no, oh, 100%, mate. And she's, I think she's there another two years, which is great. So the, the girls love her, you know, the, the club loves her. And uh, I think she's, she's going to do some fantastic things in the next few years. Yep. Yeah. And so we started training, too. To... Yeah. They've only yeah, just sorry, finished, they've started training. Sorry, Phil, go. No, you're right. Yeah. Obviously, she's got the girls stuck into pre season pretty quickly. But as, <laughs> yeah, as someone who's commentated with, uh, with her for the last three or four years, she takes yeah. to that like a duck to water. She's a, a yeah. wonderful coach, a deep thinker, and she's a pioneer in South Australian women's football. We wouldn't have the Sample W competition we have today if it wasn't for someone like Narelle Smith. And um, yeah, Foxtel, kudos to them because they got the perfect person for the role. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so I think that is a perfect way to end off a legend of, of South Australian football. So again, ladies and gentlemen, keep an eye out. We will, we will reconvene for the last sample snapshot of the year to cover all of the finals review the grand final and celebrate a champion and celebrate South Australian football after this season is over with. This has been a magnificent year. I cannot believe I've had the pleasure to sit down with these two wonderful gentlemen and talk sample footy, whether it's the men's or women's competition. I have been absolutely overwhelmed with the, with the welcoming that I've gotten from the essay from the essay community. It has been fantastic. I, I have YouTube comments. I have Twitter comments. I have, I think I've probably gained 50 or 60 new followers on several of my, of my awesome. social media sites, just specifically from South Australia that they have appreciated the ability for an American to love the, the South Australia, the, the SANFL. And it's been fantastic. And I just, I can't thank everybody enough for this. This is great. It's a little bittersweet with only one more left, but, you know me, I will definitely try over the off season to chat with some Sandful fans because I want to try to make sure this off season to chat with a fan from all of the clubs. I fell a little bit short this last year due to time. So keep an eye out, ladies and gentlemen, this off season supporter series. I want to chat with a sample supporter from each of the clubs of the sample. So gentlemen, thank you so much. Any, any last words before we get out of here? Yes, I do have a quick, uh, just a big shout to Jay Shee, the coach of the Eagles. He has, um, for four years, he's, he's resigned from the Eagles as coach. He took us to two premierships, 2020, 2021. Um, he was a 2002 McGarry medalist. And uh, obviously, unfortunately, he was in the Bali bombings as well. He wasn't hurt, but he was over there when it happened. But to give us two grand finals in four years, what an amazing thing he's done for the Eagles to set, set us up for the future. So big thank you to Jay. Yeah, here, here. Uh, not only is Jade a wonderful coach, but he's even even a better bloke. He's just a wonderful oh, man. Amazing. I bumped yeah, into absolutely. him. I bumped into him in Adelaide in the summer, and we we, we sit and chew each other's ear off chatting footy. Yeah. Uh, a wonderful man and an amazing turnaround to go from amateur league to a league premiership yeah. from one year to the next. Just an amazing effort. So congratulations to Sheeds and enjoy a bit more family time. Yeah, absolutely, definitely for sure. So all the best, all the best after after 
the there's so many years and some success there so ladies and gentlemen that is going to do it for our sample snapshot episode again we will be back after the grand final to cover everything from this season when it comes to the finals and celebrate a champion of the SANFL. thank you ladies and gentlemen we'll be back again very very soon with more footy coverage from the sample waffle and of course aflw round one coming very very soon that'll do it for us for another episode of donnie's disposals we'll see you again very very soon